Hi, welcome to the Ultimap booth, IBC 2014. We'd like to show you our virtual studio using Ultimat 11, the ORAD uh, uh, virtual reality engine that's driving our background. And then our background is coming from Dreamwall, and we're manipulating that background through the equipment uh, jib. So we take the foreground, and as the foreground camera moves, that moves our background. And then we also have our mat signal. So let's take a look at really quickly how the lighting works. Um, if you look at this green screen, it's very flat and even. And the reason for that, we're using ProPsych and they have a cove system that's one meter. So from here to here is a one meter radius. It makes very flat, even lighting. And then our lights are actually making the light very flat and even. So when we do the composite, it looks perfect. So you can see here we have a shadow. That looks good. So anything the camera sees, the Ultimac composite. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the hair. And we'll do the hair detail. So if I go in here and we look at the foreground direct, you can see her hair. There's the mat. So you can see the individual hairs all at the same time here. So anything the camera sees, we composite. And that's what you want to look want it to look like. Typically in a chroma key, we look something like that, where you cut off the edges. We don't want that. So we don't push it into a clip. We just make a perfect composite. All right, that looks good. Let's zoom out a little bit and look at the background, the video. So you notice Dreamwall and ORAD have been able to take this 3D studio, and we can map on a 2D image is what we have here. This was shot with a GoPro. And you notice as he zooms in, the ORAD system is going to follow focus. So we can actually defocus not just on the graphics, but also the video that's been mapped onto it. So they're both doing a follow focus here. And that's done with the ORAD system. And see, it looks like it would normally look if it was a real set. All right, that looks good. Let's go show a, show a shadow on the floor. So if common, if you can. So what we have here, there's our foreground. You notice we have a shadow, and that's caused by the key light up above there. So we're not artificially putting in the shadow. The shadow's really there. And as you can see, there's a shadow. The virtual and the reality meet right here on the floor. Without a shadow, it looks fake. So if I take her shadow away, you notice it doesn't look right. She's not connected to the set. So you have to have that shadow. And there we have it. All right, that looks great. So let's go ahead and take away the set. We're gonna, I always recommend using set pieces. And you notice back here, we have some stairs. Well, what's nice about the system is we can make an alpha channel of those stairs. So let's move the set now. We'll leave the talent right where they are and move the set. Let's go ahead and move the set. So now we've just moved the set. We haven't changed the lighting or anything, but now she's standing behind the stairs. Remember, this is part of the background. So what ORAD is giving me is a, a, a mat signal and the background. So now I can force the background on in front of the foreground. So now it looks like she's standing behind the steps. Okay, go ahead and walk around. So now you see her behind there. All right, a little further. So now we change the priority, we get rid of the mat. All right, so the mat's gone and now she can walk in front of the stairs. So now she just walked all the way around the stairs, even though you look at the green screen, they're not there. So this is another way to add depth to the composite. All right. That looks good. Let's go uh, to another part of the set. We'll show the railing, which is another mat. Go ahead. And there she is now. And now you notice this is really unique with the jib. We're able to look like we're right underneath or behind the railing. So as he goes up, he can reveal and go over the railing and make it look right. And there's our mat signal. You can actually kind of see the mat with the railing. If I turn the mat off, kind of blows the illusion. So now she's in front of it. We want her behind it. Also notice the background. Uh, Dreamwall has put a video, or graphic in this case, underneath her feet so we can change the background uh, anytime we want. We're playing a video. We're playing a video back here. It all looks great. Okay, um, 
Let me go show one more thing. Carmen, can you move over to your spot? Okay, we're gonna overshoot the green screen, and this is what's unique about the virtual set. You notice here, we're overshooting the green screen, right? What ORAD is doing is they're actually tracking the edge of the screen, and they're giving me a garbage mat to force on the background, and there's that mat right there. Now, they're also making a soft edge for me, which is very important, because that soft edge blends in the edge, so you don't see a transition between the uh, green screen or the background. So there you go. Go ahead and move your arm out there. You notice we lost that edge there. And that's because of the garbage mat. So obviously you made the set bigger, but you can't walk beyond it. All right, that looks good. Let me show you one more thing. In, in addition to the Ultimat, we can push this into a clip right there. Whoops. And make it a hard edge. Let me show you what happens when um, it's not done right. So if I bring in a window, you can see right here next to her, that transition you can see. So if we soften the window, it blends in better. And that's what ORAD is doing. They're sending me this garbage mat with a soft edge so it makes it blend in be much better. All right, that looks good. Um, let's go ahead and move into that room. So come on back this way, we'll go back to your position. So now she's in the same set, but a different part of the set. Again, we've just moved to three different locations without changing the lighting, without changing the set pieces. Well, we moved the set pieces out. But what I wanna show you here is the technique of how to build a background. There's our, our subject with the shadow. The problem when you light people in a, in a green environment, they have a lot of green bounce, so you have to add some light to get rid of the spill under their chin, some backlight and side light, so you get multiple shadows. What Dreamwall understands is you're gonna have multiple shadows on the background, different intensity, on the, I'm sorry, on the foreground, with different intensities, so when you build your background, you want to have those different intensities and different levels of shadow. So you notice like here they have a bright area, it's a dark shadow here, different level shadows. So now when I put her in there, her shadows match. Typically a lot of virtual set people will build a background with one key light so all the shadows go to the left. And now when you put your talent in with their key light, it could be going the wrong way. And now you have to relight the set. So when you have experienced graphics people, they already know this and so now you're done. You don't have to relight it. Also, they've added texture to the floor. So you can see different levels here, here, lines in it, and texture. And what that does is, if the floor is dirty and has marks in it, it all disappears. It's blended, so you don't have to paint it over and over or clean it as much. So I highly recommend doing it this way, building your sets in this fashion. All right, thank you for coming to the show. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, again, we have Dreamwall that built the background, ORAB, which is our virtual engine manipulating the background, uh, KinoFlow to light the green wall, and ProPsych that actually makes the coved area and the wall for us. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show.